it's April! It's the end of April and that means that there is not much growing outside but a lot of work has been done. I've done a lot of infrastructure work in the past week so let's take a peek at what's growing and what's changing. Our Juneberry or Serviceberry or Saskatoon Berry tree bush, <laughs> what, what, what have you. Um, it has started to put out leaves and looks like we have some flowers soon. So we're looking forward to tasting some beautiful, beautiful berries. Uh, usually around July is when we start seeing these. Uh, <laughs> our first berry is usually usually either a very early strawberry or a raspberry, but always always enjoy the service berries. And one of the big tasks that I did the other day is uh, a little little black raspberry maintenance. Um, this is so thorny, so thorny, that uh, I put it on this trellis. Last year was the first year with it on the trellis, and so this year I just tried to make sure that things that were poking out got tucked into the trellis and anything that was growing too far away from the trellis got pulled up because honestly we have we have a lot we don't really need to devote our entire backyard to these black raspberries although I'm sure that they would love to take over. We have a hardy kiwi never actually gotten fruit off of this. It's been here um, how many years? <laughs> We've had this maybe five years so I, maybe I don't remember but um, yeah hopefully hopefully soon. I'm not sure if I could eat these. <laughs> I'm worried I might be allergic but uh, it'll be it'll be nice to at least at least experiment. I've never had a hardy kiwi berry before, so I am excited to try, and then I guess maybe uh, trade them away if we're allergic. We'll see. But yeah, I, I believe that this is the female, and uh, that this one is the male, but I'm not sure. I do have a, fe a male and a female, in case you're worried. I've never even seen flowers, so it's not that. Well, I don't know. Could they accidentally give me two males? I don't know, man. Oh, looks like I've got a branch here that wants to go be with the neighbors. But uh, I'll tuck that back in. Hopefully, the neighbor wasn't counting on that. <laughs> the chickens got to refresh this year. Uh, they had a tarp over their run that was falling apart. I show you. I don't have the right shoes on so I can't really go in right now but they had a tarp over their run that was falling off so I took that down and I put up these clear plastic uh, panels. Um, once the tree leaves out then this whole area is very shaded. The other thing that might help is we have Virginia creeper that grows along that fence and that will probably want to take over eventually and give them more shade. Um, Otherwise, if it seems like they're they're getting too hot with the clear roof, then I'll put up a little a little tarp um, just until that comes in. Hi, chickens! And yeah, they also have a little garden area that's never really done anything, but this year it has irrigation, so fingers crossed. Um, so far, the kale that I put in there seems pretty happy. I think I maybe put broccoli in there too. I don't remember. But yeah. Hopefully, oh, it's starting to rain. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's go check out the front. And it, ooh, this one, nope. <laughs> I thought that one had three leaves, but it's just two plants next to each other. It's ramp season. It's, <laughs> these are ramps that I planted here couple of years ago so I haven't really taken any because we obviously don't have very many so I want to give it as much time as possible to get established. The plants are still pretty small still just two leaves on each of them 
So we're leaving the bee. Um, ramps are also known as the wild garlic. Uh, many, many years ago, um, 10 years ago, we joined a CSA and <laughs> the first box that they gave us had ramps and sorrel and nettles. So I made some nettle soup and it was the most delicious thing. And I've just been trying to relive that experience. So we have ramps growing and um, I think that this is sorrel. We'll come back sorrel. Uh, and yeah, we've got some Swiss chard along here. Ooh, it looks like snow, but that is an old vinegar bottle. I should have thrown it away immediately, but I left it on the ground and then the child started crunching it. So that's gonna be a cleanup task. And the daffodils are up, but they're not blooming yet. So soon. I'm afraid we just missed the crocuses. I kept meaning to come out and film, but wasn't feeling well. So I didn't. More daffodils that are gonna explode. I don't really like daffodils. Our squirrels just eat all the tulips, and I wanted that spring color. So I found some pretty interesting looking daffodils that I will show you eventually. Maybe in May. The garlic that they planted. Um, this has irrigation, but it is turned off because I don't think it needs it. And then yeah, we have lots of lots of cages growing. <laughs> right here. Oh, they just look so sunburnt. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, plants. I didn't realize just how poorly you had hardened off after being outside for so long. We have kale, uh, I think a little bit of Swiss chard and kale, and then broccoli and broccoli rob over on this side. And Swiss chard. And that's really all that's been planted this year, uh, but we do have, I don't know if you can see, we have one zone for water here, and then I have a long zone of water there and then just the strip along the trellis so if I do tomatoes then I can turn the water on and off for tomatoes if I want to stress out my tomatoes and then just one more patch there and then the bed is has its own irrigation so I can really be selective about where I turn the water on this is the biggest patch I think that I have anywhere else but yeah this bed here has two and they should have one specifically just for the trellis but maybe next year i don't know we'll see we right now there's one two and this bed one two and then on the other side of the trellis for this bed and then for the walking onion beds i only have drip line next to the trellis because the walking onions they don't need it and then I did a lot of work on the strawberry beds. For this one in the fall, um, I was having, ooh, she's open. <laughs> I was having an issue where I would come outside and I would find like a bird or a squirrel inside of here. And I think I figured out that they were getting in under, they were getting in and going under the, the uh, hardware cloth. So I took all the strawberries out and I added in like wood chips and um, compost to bring up the, the level of the soil so that it would push out this hardware cloth and they wouldn't be able to just dig their way in. Because they were not able to dig their way out and then I had to let them out. <laughs> and then the other big project that I did that I was thinking about putting off for a long time and it ended up being not a big deal at all is I just put this, it used to be a raised bed, um, but now it's just a little, a little surface so that I can string trim, trim along that and make the next door neighbor happy because my yard, their yard. I love these little mounds. Can you hear me over the sound of the rain? That. All these little mounds in the leaves. 
where the rhubarb is just shoving its way through. Can you see this mound? Oh, hello there, rhubarb. Oh. So I was a little worried about my rhubarb last year. Um, but looks like looks like some of the, they're they're coming back. I just when I split them up, I think I've probably over split them because this guy's a little small. This guy's a little small, but they've all come back. All right, now it's starting to rain pretty heavy. So I'm gonna go and get out of the rain. <gasps> oh my goodness. Before I do that though, I just saw something amazing. We have a little daffodil that's just about to bloom. Hi, daffodil. And I think we've got some honeyberries here. Oh, no flowers. We're hiding in our very small little, little greenhouse, little polytunnel. <laughs> this is about to fill up because I have a lot of stuff in the basement that needs to come out here. Um, but we've got cabbage. Um, I think this is more broccoli. You broccoli? Yeah. Broccoli and cabbage. So in a couple weeks, it looks like something has been munching on my cabbage. <laughs> But uh, this circle of life, I have too much, so hopefully they, they leave me enough. Uh, and this is where everything is. <laughs> it's all in the basement. I had terrible luck with the spoon tomatoes that I got as free seed from uh, Baker Creek. So I tried again because I really want to try the spoon tomatoes and all of mine died. Um, I've also been having terrible luck with the orange gumfrina, so I tried again. And terrible luck with the with my mixed seed gumfrina, so I tried again and that's doing better, but orange gumfrina, still not doing well. And then we've got lots of uh, cucurbits in here. It opened it up, but I think I've been cutting off leaves. Although, yeah, I think you're about ready. <laughs> about ready to go without the dome. I like to leave it on just to make sure that the mice don't eat them. But at least, uh, at least these will grow back fast enough if I need to replant them. Yeah, so we've got a little muncher cucumber and a little dragon's egg cucumber. And these are both new to me. No, this one's new to me. I don't know if this is new. I think I tried it last year. And it wasn't as bi not bitter as I said. I think it was pretty bitter. But I'm trying again because I can't find the seed for the one that I really like. But I probably still have time. I can just order that. I might order more. I think I like Richmond apple. Richmond green apple. Um, but we're trying the dragon's egg. Because this is a white cucumber. And I'm hopefully hoping that I will be able to see it <laughs> before it gets too big. And then a banana melon, which is new to me. Um, it should be a sweet melon. Crane melon is new to me. It should be a sweet melon. Spaghetti squash, not new. Classic. Ooh. I planted two of them in each, just in case. And everything sprouted, so didn't really need to do that, but we did. And then. Oh. And down here we have a bunch of different ones. So, with sweet meat. Um, this should be a winter squash. I've never tried that before, that's new to me. And this Hokkaido red curry, I think. And that's new to me. I don't remember what's on the other side. I believe it's something different over there. Uh, but yeah. So these are all looking really happy. We've got the true leaves coming. Um, and hopefully they have enough space in here. I just I planted them directly into these because like melon, melons and cucumbers and squash, they just get so big so fast that you kind of have to start big. And I need to, need to raise up my light again because my tomatoes 
probably about ready for me to stick in a steak, honestly. Um, yeah, as I said, my spoon tomatoes all died. My mealy tomatoes all died. So I've only got mortgage lifter and, uh, and the Isis cherry. And, um, yeah, they don't, they are going to appreciate getting kicked out to the warmer days as soon as it gets warm enough for that. And then we've got some peppers down here. Um, these are albino bullnose peppers, um, they, which is new to me. I've got one growing in my arrow garden, but um, I haven't really tasted them yet. So these are new this season. And I've got some, all, all of my other peppers I overwintered, but I'm really worried because I only, only like two of them look viable. So we might be light on peppers this year. Might have to just buy some starts. Then I've got a bunch of herbs up here and a bunch of status here. You're going to get kicked out of the green, kicked out into the greenhouse pretty soon status. These lights are new and they were so cheap, so I'm kind of surprised that they're working at all, but they're definitely not definitely not the most powerful bulbs. Definitely not the best, but they were so cheap. Ooh, this needs water. Straw flowers. And then, yeah, my really poorly, poorly germinated, poorly grown Gumfrina. A lot of that, that is, I got sick. And uh, maybe these lights are just, maybe they'll be happier once they get kicked outside. And then we have Galliardia, the Indian blanket, and then some sad looking zinnias. And then herbs, marigolds, and then some special special party plants for a special party. And as I have been sick for a while, these have not been properly, properly tended to. And uh, this guy is bolting. Uh, but and we're running out of space here. I don't know if I can move this light up much more. <laughs> Are you bolting too? No, it's just the one that's bolting. Okay. So we've got lots of lettuce here that needs to be eaten. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> this is the albino bullnose pepper. We've got some, ooh, can't even see some little fruits growing. Something took a bite out of this and I don't know if that was a child or a critter or what, but we do have peppers growing and some sad little onions. Some lovely perpetual spinach, which is this chard. And it's delicious and I love it. Um, <laughs> chard break. Now this little orange hat tomato put out so many and they're finally starting to ripen up. Um, I think they could, they're very yellow. They look pretty orange on camera. Oh, that's, that's better. That's more of a good representation. Now I did try one of them, and it was a little more yellow. And sadly, I didn't think it was very good. Oh, it split in my hand. Oh no. Mm. Mm. The problem they had last year when I grew tomatoes and peppers in the basement, not hydroponically, they were grown in soil. They just, they didn't taste good. So I was like, oh, maybe, maybe sunshine, like being outside, getting that rain, getting that earth, like that's really crucial for having tasty tomatoes and tasty peppers. But I just, when I started growing hydroponically, wanted to try it out. And my plan was to expand and to have some big, big buckets with tomatoes and peppers and maybe cucumbers in the basement, but um, if this tomato still doesn't taste good inside, then maybe I'm not going to. <laughs> I think I still will expand for leafy greens because, excuse me, even though I have all of those leafy greens, all of those leafy greens growing, my partner still always buys lettuce at the store. <laughs> it's just not good at like, remembering that we have it. And then also because there's 
a finite amount of lettuce growing in the house. I don't think he feels like it's a thing that we actually have that he can have, but like, please eat my lettuce. All right, let's try the orange hat tomato grown hydroponically in the arrow garden in my workout room. Okay. The one that I had before was clearly not ripe. Um, I don't know. I feel like this maybe is still not quite ripe. They're still a bit yellow. Uh, they're not orange. I don't know if orange hat tomatoes will get properly orange, but um, it's better. Um, I think it's still not not as good as an outdoor tomato, not as good as an Isis cherry tomato. So maybe I'll have to grow some of those in the basement because they are so sweet. Um, yeah, I don't know if I don't know if I can get that kind of sweetness in the house. But considering that it will be probably till at least July before I get a real outside tomato, maybe? I don't know. It'll be a while before I get a real outside tomato, so it's a pretty it's pretty good uh, pretty good inside tomato. So much better. Much better than my initial try, so I guess maybe we'll be growing tomatoes in the basement after all. We'll see. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for joining me in the garden today. I am very excited because this month is all prep work and uh, not a lot of like actual planting outside. But next month, next month is like nothing but planting outside. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for May and planting all the things. I also have so many projects I need to do and I also like need to sew an entire summer wardrobe for myself, uh, which might be a, <laughs> might not happen in May. May is pretty busy, but it's still, yeah, there's, there are... If you are here primarily, primarily for sewing stuff, there's sewing stuff coming. If you are here primarily for garden stuff, there's more garden stuff coming. Um, if you're here because you don't know why that you're here, but uh, go ahead and subscribe, like, love to have you. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye. I'm so weird. Bye.